series of gladiators and to an evening positively bursting with entertainment and action. 25,000 applicants, and we could only choose four, so I think you'll all agree they must be the best. These people are very fit people, and their hopes tonight will be to try and make it through to our final, where they'll have a stab at winning £5,000. So, let's have a look and see who these four brave, courageous people are. They are... Katie Budd. And Melissa Spackman. This year. Yeah, I think I must be, yeah. How old are you? I'm 18. Oh. One year younger than the one last year. We had somebody at 19, but that's very young. So are you still studying? I am, just finished my A-levels. Did A-level French from PE, just finished that. Oh, brilliant. So what do you like to do outside of uh, studying? Um, I do, um, do the heptathlon. Oh, how many events is that? Yeah, that's seven events. I love all sports, badminton, basketball, netball, everything. Now, I want you to share with me and about... 14 million other people, what do you think of the gladiators? Well, basically, they're just the same as us, with a little bit more experience and a lot more makeup. <laughs> Say no more. Go prepare for our very first event. We'll see you later. Katie Bird. Melissa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Right, I'm a fitness consultant up in the northeast, and there's a few of my friends over there in the back. I can see you giving them away. There are lots of them there. What else? Um, I do athletics. I throw the javelin um, from a local club, Nottingham. Have you been doing any special training for the events? Right, there's been a lot of uh, cardiovascular work, a lot of stamina work because it's tough. The games are only short, but you have to withstand a lot of up a go, so yeah. It's hard. Are you nervous? A bit, but um, I'm here now and I'm going to give them the best shot. Well, you've got all your supporters here. Off you go, Melissa. Get yourself ready. Melissa. Let's meet the guys. They are Ian Simpson and Paul Beswick. Oh, home support there, Ian. Nice to welcome you back because you were actually with us a little bit last year, weren't you? Yeah, I was here as a reserve last year. Didn't get a show. Uh, I was promised to keep myself fit, go through all the process again, and I'd get a show. Here I am. So, what do you do and where are you from? I'm in the RAF. Should have a few supporters there from RAF High Wycombe. Thanks very much. So, tell me, what do you do outside work? What sort of things do you enjoy? Well, all kinds of sport. My main sport is judo uh, and bodybuilding. A uh, big thanks to the Body Studio in Deal at this stage. They've got me ready for this one. I've just won the Inter Services Judo Championships, under 86 kilograms. I'm fit, I'm ready. Blimey. <laughs> for our very first event, Ian Simpson. Now, Paul, you're looking very confident. It's deafening in here. You must have about 300 supporters with you. Who are they all? Yeah, there's one or 200 over there. I've got my mum, my dad, friends at work. I've got people I know from school, all, all manner of people. Tell us, what do you do for work? I work at Northwood Stadium in Stoke-on-Trent. So I have to fill a number of roles. As you can hear, they're over there. I coach the youngsters who come from the schools. I run all organised holiday activity courses, and I even coach international athletes. So how on earth have you had time to get fit for this show? Well, in my spare time, and it is very little spare time, I'm one of the top 25 pole vaulters in the UK. So really, I haven't had to do a lot of special training for gladiators, because my normal training carries me through. Now, you know we've got some new events, obviously the old ones. Anything you can tell us? Any, any secrets? Well, I'm not going to let my secrets out because the gladiators are listening out the back, but look out for Pyramid. I've got a game plan, and I'm sure it's going to work. All the best. Off you go. Get yourself ready, Paul. Paul Beswick! Well, our girls should be ready for our very first event this evening. It's Powerball! AT is using the red ball. And Melissa is using the blue ball. And guarding those baskets is Falcon, Nightshade, and Lightning! Three, two, one. Both girls powered up. 
Off the power ball and powered up is right. Both girls scoring immediately. Melissa, oh, lightning and nightshade taking each other out. And Katie scores again. What is going on? Gladiator, oh! Prolific scoring. Melissa gets it in again. Katie slips, Falcon, another two points. Both girls scoring at will. Gladiator's having a nightmare game and hoping to wake up soon. Falcon finally brings Melissa down. And nightshade on Katie. Things are starting to happen a bit now. Melissa, lightning pushes her out of bounds. Katie heaved to the ground by Falcon. And Melissa, oh, she breaches past Falcon. And picks up two of the easiest points of her life. Perhaps she should have gone for the middle basket. What? What's happening? Katie stops. Melissa hasn't, though, another two points. Katie slams in a three-pointer to make this a record-scoring game for the girls. Well, I don't know what stopped Katie in the middle there. Perhaps she thought she heard a whistle or something. But anyway, the Gladiators not getting their tackling together. See how Katie almost strolls past Falcon. Katie, 11 points. Well done. Melissa, 12 points. Let's hear it for Katie and Melissa. Well, the girls doing well, but they got a lot of help from the Gladiators, who didn't get to grips with their tackling. Gladiators, tell us what's going on. Well, we got, I have to say, very rare, but we got a bit confused because this is a very good powerball team. We thought we heard a whistle, and so we stopped. And in the time that um, we all looked around, a couple of points have been scored. But the girls, did, the girls did well, the other contenders, but we have more games to play, and so we'll even up later. I'm sure they will. Meanwhile, Katie's on 11, Melissa's on 12. Next, we have the men's event. And Ian is on the red balls, and Paul has chosen the blue. And guarding those baskets, Warrior, Hunter, and Trojan! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! get it as easy as the girls not at the moment both been brought down heavily by the gladiators warrior on ball great speed from the big man takes him down ian two and no score yet warrior and ian oh but it's the hunter who steams in and takes him out flying tackle from trojan on ball and gladiators doing a great job at the moment Ball, great dive for two points. No one can stop that. In a Trojan. Hunter comes in. Great tackle by the Warrior on the other side of the pitch there on Paul. Stops him getting a certain two. Both contenders down the same end of the pitch. That's what the Gladiators like. Three against two. Oh, Paul oh, throws his ball away. He's not daft. Didn't need Warrior on top of him like Ian's now got. Oh, but he takes two of them. I suppose that's like having one Warrior. The boys are suffering. The Gladiators take revenge for that girls' event. Oh, look at that flying tackle. The Gladiators gave the contenders very few chances to score, and it was only a piece of magic by Paul that any points got on the board at all. Well, Ian, earlier on you said this is the event you weren't looking forward to. You knew what to expect. Was it exactly what you expected? Worst. Horrible. They're big. They get in the way. There's not enough room there to manoeuvre. And it hurts when they fall in here, John. It's that simple. Unfortunately, Ian, no points. I know. Paul took a couple of knocks there. I think there was one time when three of them all took it at the same time. How does it feel? Took a couple of knocks is an understatement. That's the first time I've ever run into ten brick walls. That is hard, hard work. Just got to get up and carry on, though. Got me two points. Happy. Well done. Paul, two points. It's him for one event, Ian yet to score, Paul's on two. Event number two is Jewel. First up is Katie, and she's facing Lightning. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Well, 
Katie may be our youngest contender, but looking at the statistics, 5'9 and 11 stone 2, she has a 3 inch height advantage over Lightning and just over a stone in weight. 3, 2, 1. Oh, Katie going straight to work. Oh, and a bad miss from Lightning. And Lightning's technique found wanting here. It's out of range. Not really an event for a gymnast. More grace than power. She's got to slide her hands down the shaft of the pugil stick in order to lengthen those blows. Ah, oh, takes a haymaker and takes a dive! <laughs> got to see that shot again in slow motion. And look how far back this comes from. A face full of foam and lightning burst. Before we started, you said you were hoping to meet Nightshade in Jewel. Oh, what a Nightshade. Next round. I'll have a next round, yeah. Second best, though, Lightning, and what a terrific match you put I, up. I enjoyed that immensely. It was wicked. I love that. Ten points. Let's yeah. aim for Katie. Yeah. Well, Lightning fully recovered, climbs the ladder to face Melissa. As you can see, she's 5'6 and 10 stone, so she's going to be giving away height and weight to Melissa. If you check her statistics, she's 5'9 and 10 stone, 11 pounds. Three, two, one. And Lightning getting carried there. Her grip on the pugil stick is all wrong isn't getting a single blow in. It's constantly missing. And Melissa finding it easy to parry the blows. Oh, gets a good headshot in. Good draw for Melissa there, five points. the gymnast. What a lovely backward somersault dismount. After two events, Katie's on 21, Melissa's 17. So now we move into the men's event, and tonight Ian has the misfortune of facing the undefeated Shadow! I've got a message for the gladiators. Don't underestimate the contenders this year. They're very fit, they're very strong, and they're going to give you a good run for your money. Contender ready! undefeated I got him off my dream come true he went down thank you not many shadow you have to hand it to the man not many people see you off that that's true but that happens sometime I give him all respect let's hear it for shadow as nice, well nice. terrific man Shadow taking his defeat gracefully in the replay. We see that, in all honesty, it was Shadow's own weight that overbalanced him, but let's take nothing away from Ian. And that sign says it all. Well, that victory must inspire Paul, but at 5'10", he's giving away five inches and an awful lot of weight. Contender ready! Gladiator! He 
he's about to meet a man who just lost his unbeaten record, which has stood for three years. So Shadow's bound to be fired up, seeking retribution, and straight to life. This is more like the old Shadow. It's hammer time! And Paul not getting a single blow in. It's all about defence. Paul gaining a little more confidence now. And after that comment from Shadow, he's not best pleased with Paul's performance. Paul's not really bothered about that. Getting a little confidence, going for Shadow's head, but it's all too late. A defeat and a draw for Shadow. In the replay, we can see Paul more interested in what was coming at him than giving anything back. Well, Paul, I suppose the odds were against you knocking him down. He oh. was one mean gladiator after his defeat. He was mad. Mad as hell. Oh, God, the, he hits so hard. I think he might bust a finger. And uh, a lot of defensive work by you, I'm it's, sorry to say. It's very difficult. Once he hits you, to get your bounce and then recoil. You try every now and again, then he hits you with three before you even move. Well, it's easy for me to say, but easy for me to say as well. Five points, Paul, well done. And it's easy for me to say after two events, the Shadow Slayer moves up to ten and Paul to seven. Well, with two games under their belts, our contenders still have to face our gladiators in another three. So join us after the break for one of our brand new games, Pyramid, here on the Gladiators! top of the pyramid is two of our gladiators. Katie and Melissa are ready. Tonight, they're facing Falcon and Scorpio. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! and Katie with more of a mountain to climb than a pyramid as the gladiators come on down. Katie grabbing hold of Scorpio's feet there, trying to pull her off. Each step, two foot in height, difficult to climb up, but easy enough to roll down as Melissa and Falcon demonstrate. Scorpio there, wrenching Katie off the pyramid and gets dragged down to the bottom herself. And Falcon takes a real fly with Melissa, straight to the ground. But look, Katie slips Scorpio, she's waiting for the summit. She's there, the sparks fly for ten points, that was quick. Melissa not having the same luck against Falcon, misses the ladder, hits the snake, and straight down to the bottom, and on the bottom. Stamina required here. And trying to pull Falcon off the pyramid to get past her. The Falcon gets hold of something and pulls her back down. Melissa up and at it again. I don't understand why Scorpio's still pulling on Katie. She's got her ten points. Falcon's got a challenge into Melissa, but it's too late now. <laughs> Melissa, a fit girl, tried to outsprint Falcon there. Falcon dives, catches her by the legs. And according to the theory of relativity, the only way is down. Terrible trouble. She's uh, strong. Yep, she got me. Got a good hold of me, and I think I reared more than I should have, but... You <laughs> came flying down a couple of times. Yeah, I tried to get her down, and so I could sprint, but I got to make sure she's quick. This one's yeah. tougher than it looks, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a tough game. Let's hear it for Katie and Melissa. Well done. Well, the star of that event was Katie, but Scorpio knew the game lasted a minute, so I guess she decided to play for a minute. With those 10 points, Katie jumps to 31, Melissa remains on 17. Well, now it's time for the boys' event, and tonight, Ian and Paul face two of our biggest gladiators, Warrior and Shadow! Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! Well, 
this pyramid's a bit top heavy with our two biggest gladiators up there. Shadow, a great dive to take Paul down, and it's not so much the rolling down as the gladiator landing on you at the bottom as Ian's just found out with Warrior on him. Paul's given Shadow the slip. Derek Redman trying to break the tussle up. Meanwhile, Paul's got his turn points, and Shadow is defeated for the second time this evening. Warrior still a hold of Ian. Rolls him to the bottom. Oh, Ian's escaped his clutches and he's sprinting to the top now. Look at Warrior. He's like a crab trying to chase the tide out. Five points to Ian. The Gladiators stranded on the beach. As soon as the big man released his grip, it was no contest. The lighter contender sped away like a greyhound out of the trap. Second attempt up there. What a terrific showmanship. The audience were right behind you. Hard work. I'm actually like he's a heavy man. My objective was to bring him down because he's heavy, he's going to be slow. It worked. I'm over the moon. And Paul, I don't know if I think I've seen anything quite as terrific as somebody tumbling 32 feet in the arms of Shadow. Well, they're fast, they're tough, but I'm sweet, and I showed him a clean pair of feet. A poem and ten points by the best man. That's it for Paul and Ian. He's picked up ten points for the climb, but nothing for the poem. 19 stone of your Shadow. Find it hard. No, I didn't find it hard. That's a brilliant game. I think one of the best games we're going to have this year. Do you think that you've got any advantages or disadvantages of starting at the top? No, not really. I think it's very equal. Us coming down to meet them, them coming up to meet us, and the best man wins. What well on, Shadow? Warrior, the big man. A few tumbles there. Yeah, we made the game exciting. It's very difficult when you're underneath. And really, the guy who gets up first has a big advantage to get up there, especially when the 10-stone lighter. But, uh, new game, no worries, we'll make a good show of it, don't worry. It looked for a minute that you were holding. When you got down the ground there, you fell to the bottom, it looked like you were grappling with him. Who, me? Yes, you. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for Shadow and Warrior! Of course he would, and after three events, Ian climbs to 15 and Paul to 17. Next up, hit and run. And the first contender on the bridge, Katie, who was apprehensive about this event. I'm a bit wary about the hit and run, which is a new cannonball game. Um, I don't know whether to like, stop and wait for the cannibal to go past or just charge it. Because I don't know, I might get more points if I did that, but you know, to see what happens on the day really. Just take, go with them off, go with the flow, as they say. Katie's the first up and swinging those demolition balls are our gladiators Nightshade, Jet, Scorpio, and Panther! Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Gladiator, ready! Three, two, one! Well, what is she gonna do, run or stop? She's letting the ball swing by, and she's only got 30 seconds to score as many points as possible. Two. Now she's starting to speed up. Contenders not allowed to push the demolition balls away with their hands or deflect them, otherwise they'll be penalised. This is better from Katie. Now she's getting some speed up. Eight points. She did well once she put her mind to the task. In the replay, we can see she timed her run well, diving under that last demolition ball. Katie, well done. Oh, yeah, it's hard that game. It's harder than it looks, you know. You've got to have a technique more than just speed. You can't just charge it. Yeah, it's too short, though. What were you actually doing? You're stop starting, yeah. stop starting. Is that to fool yeah. the gladiators? And just to like avoid the balls as well, yeah. What can you do when the balls hit you? Don't let try and let it rebound off you. Good game. Good. Okay. Well done, Katie. And our next contender to face the gladiators is Melissa. Earlier today, Melissa discussed her opponent, Katie, with us. My opponent will be getting on great. Um, it's difficult because you want to be friends. Everybody, everybody's been really supportive and brilliant. There's no sort of 
um, people that maybe you don't get on with so much. Everybody's all in it together. Um, and my opponent, we've had a good, we've had a good sort of chat and we get on very well. A couple of drinks in the evening together. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a bit uh, a bit of rivalry there at the uh, last minute. But it's good. Contender ready. Steps onto the bridge tentatively. Must be like being on a building site. Two. Now she's hit stride Four. and scoring well. The bridge undulating Three. beneath her feet. And she's certainly got rhythm. Eight. Oh, a bit shaky there. Eight. And she's piling on the points. Oh, takes one to the shoulder there. That was close. Four. Run. In the replay, we can see how that demolition ball bounces off her shoulder and nearly knocks her off her feet. 12 points, a great score after four events. Katie 39, Melissa 29. On to the men's event. Ian will be facing Trojan and Wolf. Over to John Anderson. Contender ready! Ian, six foot, 13 stone, seven. An RAF man looking to fly across this bridge. So it's chocks away. He's taken off and about to do a fly pass. Oh, he's, he nearly went then, but I think he held on to that ball. I don't think you're allowed to do that. We'll see what John Anderson's got to say. He seems to be letting him carry on for a minute. Four. These balls are like giant silver conkers. The gladiators Eight. not conquering at all at the moment. Ian doing Eight. well and scoring well. Eight. It could be a promotion in it for him. That's it, he's still going. Look that he's heard the whistle. <laughs> oh. oh, and now they knock him off. A bit late now, lads. held on with his hands, which is strictly against the rules. Half the points are deducted, five points. Five points, Ian. What he's saying is because you held on to the demolition balls and stopped yourself from falling, deducting some points. All right, that's John's decision, that's John's decision. I'm simply defending myself against the balls. I uh, respect John, they're free, thanks very much. Well done, Not a plenty more to go. Let's hear it for Ian. Next, facing the gladiators, is Paul! Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Gladiators, ready! Three, two, one! Well, I bet Paul Porter Paul would love to have brought his pole along to jump over these demolition balls. And he's scoring well at the moment. Oh, so close to being knocked off then. How is his way through it? And the contenders not allowed to hit the demolition balls with their hands. Must let them bounce off the shoulders. Oh, the okie koki as well. Great scoring from Paul. Great with him. The only dive he took was at the end. Well done, Paul. Made it look easy. One of your better events. Yeah, that's a good event for me. Nice and fast, nice and agile. Got to be quick. Don't be scared of the big balls. Well done, Paul. And let's hear for our gladiators. Wolf, Children, Cobra, and the Hunter. And Wolf showing his disappointment there as both guys move their score off. So, event number five is Hang Tough. First up is Katie, and tonight she faces Zodiac. Over to 
to John Anderson. Zodiac's first outing in Hang Tough, 5-9, 10 stone. Contender, ready! leading Melissa by 10 points going into this event, looking to extend that lead, and looking comfortable up there. Ah, but so does Zodiac. Zodiac, the ladies' British Commonwealth pole vault champion, comes straight into the scissors. Zodiac gets those long legs firmly round Katie's body, but Katie's hips locked onto those rings, and that's what this event's all about. At 10 stone, not the heaviest of gladiators, but she can't shake her. Goes to work on the fingers, prizes them off. Mum and Dad disappointed as another one bites the dust. Katie, you showed tremendous determination there. Your eyes were closed. What were you thinking about when she was hanging on to you? Just hang on, do you know what I mean? Just hang. That's the spirit. Well done, Katie. Next up against Zodiac, it's Melissa! Over to John Anderson. Contender, ready! Gladiator, ready! Three, two, one! And Zodiac having a good outing for the first one. But it must be said that the Gladiators not having the best of shows tonight. So Zodiac will want to take Melissa out and even the score. Melissa, a strong girl, and good technique on the rings. Zodiac's got her back to her. And Melissa goes past. Zodiac dropping back to defend that platform. And she's one ringed. Can't do a thing about it. And Melissa's got every opportunity to get to that platform now. But she's got to move it. Time is running out. Come on, Melissa! And that's it. Time is up. So close, yet so far. too confident up there but you did very well indeed because when John Anderson blew the whistle at the end of the 60 seconds of course you were officially in our scoring zone five points well, that's good yeah I'm pleased with that what one that you felt confident with though it wasn't my favorite event but in practice it hadn't been going too well but today it went well so I'm pleased with that result well done now very unlucky for you of course you lost one ring and then that really stuffs you the problem is with hang tough it's very easy to go in one diagonal when you have to traverse and start crossing on the rings that's something I need a bit more practice on, but next time I'll keep working at it. Thank you. Let's hear it for Zodiac and Melissa. Well done. After five events, Katie's on 39, Melissa 34. So now we move on into the men's event, and Ian is ready to face Saracen. The weight of this gladiator at 17 and a half stone Over belies the fact how good he is at this event. Tender, ready! out, 11 points behind Paul going into this event. I saw him in practice and he was tremendous, it must be said. Traversing the rings and moving past. Saracen trying to get back to defend his platform. And Ian flying along now. Reaching out with those long arms, hoping to grab a boot lace, a vest, or anything that will stop this man. And I hope he doesn't take a tip out of Wolf's book and go for those shorts. He just can't get him. Ian cleverly lifting his legs out of Saracen's reach. The only man to have beaten Shadow. He must be full of confidence, and it's showing. So close, but can't get there. Ah! Oh! 
no, saucy Saracen. The old return to the platform and take him out maneuver, which unfortunately means instant disqualification. Well, Ian, I'm not quite sure of the result of that one, and I think hopefully, I two feet hopefully, on the platform. two feet on the platform, you took me off the platform, surely. He is the man who will tell us um, what the result is. The rules in this competition are very clear. Once you have left the platform, you may not return to it. Ten points to the winner. Woohoo! Okay. Well done. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. One person not too happy about that. I needed those ten points. I badly needed those ten points. I'm pleased with the ten points. Thank you. Well, Lady Luck Thank is smiling on you tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Disappointing result for you, Sarah. No, um, I quite enjoyed that. It was a very good chase. You know, it is very well. It nearly got away from me, but unfortunately, I stood back on my platform and it doesn't count, so. Well, he's among very, very few. Well done, Saracen! In the replay from this angle, Ian's very lucky he wasn't disqualified for kicking Saracen away. Still, the point stands. Next up, Paul. Here's what he said about Ian. I've seen my opponent and he's weary of me and I'm weary of him. He watches me, I watch him. It's going to be the same for everybody. You know you're up against quite early in the event. You know what he's got to do, his capabilities are. You know where his strong points are, where his weak points are. You just have to act calm and try not to show that it affects you. Contender ready! Paul swings out for the scoring zone, and if he's there after 30 seconds, he'll pick up five points. Ten if he lands on Saracen's platform. Nothing if he lands on the crash mat. And people have been saying that he looks like Hunter. Well, if he performs as well, he should be a happy man. And Paul trying that difficult traversing technique. Oh, no, he's one-ringed, and he's come to a dead stop. Saracen sees his opportunity and home straight in. And Paul fending him away with his free hand, grabbing him. Now Saracen, one ring, and they're both going nowhere. Hanging about like a couple of string puppets. Saracen's got him locked on. Oh, Paul eats him back. Sure. I think it's like the Versace look I was after, you know, and he did it for me. The problem is when you go second, sometimes it can be psychological advantage, but not when the first guy's made him mean. Well, listen, it looked as if there was method to your madness, but then it all went to pot, and both of you ended up hanging on to only one ring. Yeah, he did very well hanging on one ring, and he was trying to pull my hand off. Did you see that, naughty boy? <laughs> Good sportsmanship, though. Let's hear it for Saracen and Paul. No point. Well, in the replay, Saucy Saracen says, hold your hand out, you naughty boy, and gives him five. In football, they normally exchange shirts at the end. At Gladiators, they never have a shirt left to exchange. <laughs> the men's scores couldn't be closer after five events. Ian on 30, Paul on 31. So, our contenders have successfully eliminated our Gladiators all that remains is the Eliminator itself. So join us after the break for the mother of all assault courses here on the Gladiators! ahead of Melissa. Each point is worth half a second. That gives Katie a two and a half second head start. Katie, you will go on my first whistle. Melissa, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Katie attacks the high and low hurdles. Oh, bad landing. Here comes Melissa. Go, Melissa. And Katie up the road. There's her brother. And 
and Melissa making a meal of this rope climb. Soap on a rope there. Katie doesn't look comfortable on that hand ladder either. Melissa easing along. Safety across the rolling beams. It's neck and neck on the cargo net. Katie safely scrambles to the top, slightly ahead. She's going to be first down the zip line. And it's a good landing. Here comes Melissa, straight after her. You've got to keep your head on the balance beams. And of course, your feet for a place in the quarterfinals. Katie strides out on the Terminator. Oh, she's down! And now Melissa's stumbling. And it's see you later, Travelator. And into the quarterfinals, where she'll face Karen Sampy. wanting to complete this eliminated course for herself, her parents, and her pride. Oh, she jumps up like a frightened gazelle, exhausted, but she'll have been happy to get through. Melissa, congratulations. You Thank said you. that the two and a half seconds was nothing to you, and you showed her. Where do you think you really caught her up? Um, well, I knew that she was going around, and she got across the beam, which I was worried about. But I knew she had a problem with the uh, travelator, and she'd fallen off in practice quite a lot, and that was where I was confident. And you also looked like you caught her up on the cargo net. Yep, I uh, messed up on practice a bit. Been thinking about it a lot, and thought about the technique a lot more. And uh, it's just taking it cool. Well, Melissa, congratulations. A winner on Gladiator! When we talked about your rehearsals right through the Eliminator, you said it was important to keep your mind and body together. I know. I, know. I can't believe it. I'm so disappointed. I know that's the way it goes, isn't it? It certainly is. You've had some tremendous support from your friends and family this evening, though. I've had an excellent time. I say hello to my best friends, Claire, Sean and Anna. They want the spell from Drummer and Belfast. Mum and Dad and everybody. Well, as we prepare for the men's eliminator, we're going to take a little short time out. My hobbies are joy and playing with my dogs. My hobbies must be traveling. I do like to travel. I like to go away about four or five times a year to different places. I love to read, write, um, watch movies, crash out with friends, and, ba and talk on the telephone. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Favourite hobbies are reading and babysitting. I love looking after my friends' children. My well, bodybuilding is my hobby, which I do five times a week. I also do a lot of long-distance biking, which is for fat burning. But for fitness, I do a lot of sprint training, and I do quite a lot of boxing. My hobbies outside of the gladiators, um, my pole vaulting, my athletics, I love water sports, uh, windsurfing, water skiing, um, and if I've got the time, horse riding. My hobbies are mainly sporting activities. When I have the time, I like to go horse riding, rollerblading, obviously weight training and fitness workouts. My main hobby is bodybuilding. That's what I enjoy doing. I train four days a week. I don't really have time for other things because I'm still working as a fireman and uh, that keeps me very busy. Now, score-wise, Paul is ahead on one point. Each point being worth half a second will give him a half a second head start. Not a lot, Paul. Any experience that you can draw upon for this assault course? I don't think you can go on experience. Ian, the same as a lot of other people here, is a very, very strong contender. Half a second is nothing. This is going to be one race. Certainly is, and it's certainly going to be your worst fear, as you told me earlier, Ian. Yeah, my worst fear, Paul. Don't look back, I'm right behind you, mate. Half a second is nothing. This is going to be a tough fight. I'm going all the way to the end. Best of luck, and we'll see you at the end. Paul, you will go on my first whistle. Ian, 
you will go on my second position. Can you imagine facing the gladiators Three, over five grueling two, events and coming out the one. other end with only half a second head start? The whistles are together, and so are the guys. And Paul extending his lead fractionally on the rope climb. Onto the hand bikes. And Paul looks to have a better technique. Rolling beams, you don't want to slip here. And Paul makes it comfortably, as does Ian. And this is where a lead is made or broken up, the cargo net. So far, Paul doing everything right. And Ian's still in it. Passes along the balance beam and up the travelator. Oh no, he slipped. He's down, but he's clawing his way to the top. Through and into the quarterfinals against Mark Skipper. Paul, oh, congratulations. Made it look hard. I made it look hard. It is hard. That is so, so tough. But. I didn't come here with the attitude to come second. I didn't come second. I come first. But my hat goes off to Ian. Good contender. It's been a lovely week. It's been good knowing him. But bye bye. Paul, we'll be seeing you again. Congratulations. Another winner on the Gladiator! Huge disappointment then for most because you've had your second year here at Gladiators, so um, disappointment. Very much so. I can't just say a big thank you to everybody here supporting me. Thank you to uh, everybody for turning up. Sorry I couldn't win for you. Kelly and Jason, I love you. Claire, I love you. Luke, Mark, my brother in Hong Kong, I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> well. The Bez man did the biz, and there's a big hug for his mum. Well, Ian's brother in Hong Kong may not have been watching us tonight, but we do hope you'll join us again next week for more gladiatorial action on the hottest show in town here on The Gladiator. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. One team member will be flinging the darts, the other will be flying through the questions. People, places, potluck could only be bullseye. Next, here on Challenge and tonight at 9, Bradley Walsh signals that the chase is on.